Uh, how did the film idea begin? Well, I was a science journalist in New York right after I got out of college. I was working in the, in the field for about three years and I uh, was feeling a bit underpaid. Uh, in one case, I was writing with a male byline, Sam Mazur, <laughs> and uh, I, I just became very disillusioned and I dropped out and uh, became a fashion model where I was very well paid and I was traveling a great deal and in uh, one case I was invited with some other models to by the El Sabah family of Kuwait uh, to do some fashion shows the Equestrian Club and the American Embassy there and we were also invited by the Shah of Iran. This was in 1976 and when we got to Kuwait we were greeted with uh, a state dinner we met many many people and I made a lot of friends and went back to Kuwait and to some of the other Gulf countries uh, and in 1979 on a visit to Kuwait um, I had returned to journalism 1979 I visited the uh, Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research and there I discovered that they were building a solar farm and I was really fascinated and I wrote my story, went back to New York, researched a bit more, and I discovered that Saudi Arabia was also making a solar village, but an even larger one. And uh, from that time, 1979, I've been watching the village develop. And uh, for the past two years, I've been in touch with the Ministry of Information regarding the film and uh, just recently we've been invited to come and take a look around and uh, begin really putting the documentary together. How has it affected these people's lives? They're very happy to uh, have the energy. I mean, just uh, two years ago, the main source of energy in some of the villages was really the, uh, the battery of a car. They hooked up uh, a kind of belt around the back wheel and uh, used that for their electricity and um, now one house in particular we visited there were 26 air conditioners <laughs> now i believe you, you are in your film planning to compare and contrast the kind of uh, research and the kind of experiment that this village represents with other research that's being done in other parts of the world. You mentioned Sweden, for instance, um, and you have some slides, I believe, that you've taken. Yes, we, we thought it would be very interesting to contrast with Sweden because who would ever think that there would be solar energy there? In fact, one place where there, there is a, a village is uh, very near the Arctic Circle. But the Swedes uh, are using solar energy more of as a conservation measure well, maybe we can see some of those slides, and there they are now. What is this, for instance? Actually, this is not Sweden. This is the solar village here in Saudi Arabia. It's a very beautiful photograph. This is Sweden. This is an overview of Likavo, which is outside of Stockholm. And what here you see the see? here you see the solar flat plate collectors, and just behind a monitoring station. Now, this is all a different principle from the Here's solar another, village. Yes, it is. These are flat plate collectors. They produce only hot water and uh, heat. No electricity. Uh, this is another shot. And another yet closer to the flat plate collector field. These are the houses at uh, Likabo that are receiving the energy from the field. The collectors again. And the reason they're that shape is because they're collecting the sun's rays and then heating up the water that's beneath them, is that right? Yes, this is a cave in which the water is stored. It holds about 100,000 cubic meters of water. This, this cave holds the water year-round at a temperature of 90 degrees centigrade. And uh, the people in the village tap this heat during the winter months. This is one of the pipes. It uh, channels the water and glycol which, uh, and here we have another shot inside the cave. You see some of the equipment used to uh, maintain the operation. This is a diesel backup. So the principle may be simple in solar energy, but the technology is quite advanced, isn't it? Yes. It almost looks like a nuclear power station.
and of course, one all of the technicians. All the this is a solar flat plate array in Ostersund, which is near the Arctic Circle. Yeah. We're going back to the cave here. George Obremsky, our photographer, and you can't see the director. He's in the middle, Jan Krapalian, who could not make it, unfortunately. It's a problem in his family. Myself and our guide. The collectors again from the back. Here we have a school near Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden, and they have, again, hot water and uh, heating from solar panels on the roof of the building. And the unique thing here is that the energy is stored, can we see the next slide, in the soccer field, which you see here, underground. And when they don't have uh, sufficient sunshine to produce the hot water and the heat, they tap the store there. Here we have uh, an apartment complex near the school, and this operates in the same principle. And what they're investigating here is they would like to see if they can just draw the, the heat from the ground without having to use heat pumps. This is a high temperature system. So these were, apart from the very first one, all slides taken in, in Sweden. Yes. Have you been taking slides, presumably, here? Yes, that but you have? much more exciting ones here. <laughs> it's, uh, we've been getting the villagers, and uh, we, really, we've been living with the villagers. I, I've been milking goats, climbing hills, picking fruit. Uh, it's, it's really been uh, an exhilarating experience, and I'm sure the photographs will uh, reveal that. Now, the film itself, uh, Susan, just to finish with, what kind of film will it be and where will it be shown and these sort of things? The, film, the distribution will be worldwide. It will be seen on American television. It's a PBS designed uh, film, the public broadcasting uh, station, which is comparable to BBC. We'd also like to uh, air it on BBC. It's going to be shown hopefully on Saudi Arabian television in Sweden, Japan, uh, the United Nations University in Tokyo would like to distribute it to the third world and to parts of Europe. And of course we'll enter it in, in film festivals all over the world. And uh, one charming element of the film is that we have Anthony Quinn as the off-camera narrator. So he's all the Greek. Yes, and he's been in all of those wonderful desert classics and uh, he's going to really bring some excitement to it. Well, Susan, thanks very much indeed for coming along and telling us about your film. We hope that when you return back to the kingdom to do the actual shooting, that maybe we can bring you in again and you can tell us about how it's going and, and what's happening. And we hope, obviously, it's going to be a great success. Thank you very much, Linda. And again, thank you to the people at the ministry and to the people at Solaris.